showing you know, it's a newsletter and it could prove to you that uh, we're in trouble because they're about to come to America and get ya. Here's what Sister Lucy looks like now. She's an old lady. She's been silenced by the Masonic part of the church, infiltrated. And she's, uh, Jacinto and Francisco, her cousins, are going to be beatified um, October 7th by the Holy Father John Paul II. Pray um, that God will consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That's what you ask God every day and every hour. Say, Lord, please help the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Not the consecration of the world, which has been done. And Our Lady of Fatima requested the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is what you should be praying for all the time. Make sacrifices that this be accomplished or you will be annihilated. It's up to you. Joan of Arc. You've heard of her. You might have seen the movie. Here's a little article. And... You know, anyone who reads the papers knows that a new world government's being set up. Because, you know, every, everybody, people naturally like to get together, right? And make a city and group. Um, Cain was the builder of the first man-made city. And he was the first to succumb to that urge to conglomerate, right? Generations later, watching men at work on the Tower of Babel, reading the Bible... God prophesied they would never leave off, quote, leave off from their designs till they accomplished them indeed. That's Genesis 11, 3, 6. Look it up. And in our current time, you know, God scattered them by their languages. In our current time, we had this uh, James Warburg, scion of the international banking family, told a Senate committee back in 1950, we shall have world government whether you like it or not, if not by consent, by conquest. This is, this is what our leaders are trying to do. Unfortunately, when fallen human nature seeks political uni on it, unity on its own without reference to divine law, the resu result is utopia. It's a Greek word, which means no, nowhere. That's what it is, and that's where it leads. Only divine intervention can arrest the craze for utopia. God doesn't confront it by reasoning, because unbridled reason is precisely what causes it. The madmen of Babel trying to reach heaven through technology and to make their name famous, quote, were not stopped by argument, but only by a catastrophic disruption of their communication systems, which struck without warning or recourse. And this is what God's going to do again. Sure, it's nice to have the internet, but not when the devil controls it. Jesus Christ has to rule through his man Peter, through the Roman Catholic Church, and anybody who's listening who has any influence, this is what you have to do. If you want to stay alive and you want to continue to make money or whatever you like to do, you must let the Catholic Church instruct the people in the faith. And, and otherwise, God's going to wipe it out. That's your option right now. Get rid of, get rid of your plans and, and begin to restore the Catholic Church or God's going to wipe you out. And there's no future for you evil people. Knock it off or you're going to be wiped out. Last warning. But I want everybody to have the language here. that Because, um, let's see, let's continue here. God acted in similar fashion centuries later when the ambition when the ambition of the English kings threatened Christendom and it's England still with a new world order of their own making, without preamble, he confronted the Aaron Utopians with Joan of Arc, a sturdy peasant girl of 17, hardly five feet tall. In 1429, she appeared suddenly before Charles, the beleaguered heir of the French throne, wearing men's clothing, her hair black, cut short. There was no getting around her. She told him she had orders from God to see him properly crowned and to stop the English in their tracks. And so listen to the language you know, it's, it's history and fact that this happened in great miracles. And a small army defeated the bloody English with God's help. And that's where we're at now. If everybody will pray, God will raise up a leader and we can 
defeat, get the, the scum out of this country. Listen to this. This is, this is, there is no human explanation for Joan's victory over the English. Um, he, she wrote a letter. She wasn't very educated. Peasant girl, shepherd. Jesus Maria, and addressed the Duke of Bedford and you know the different people, the Earl of Suffolk and John Lord Talbot and Thomas Lord Scales and lieutenants of the aforementioned Duke of Bedford. She says, here's what she says. Give satisfaction to the King of Heaven. She commanded them to deliver the keys of all the goodly towns you have taken and violated in France to no less than herself. So here's a young girl in the name of God, like Moses, saying, knock it off. You've, you've destroyed our, infiltrated our Catholic Church, and you've, you've, you've brainwashed our children, and you've put the devil on TV. You're going to stop it right now, or God's going to wipe you out. Okay, same thing today. Here, the virgin who has been sent by God, the King of Heaven, go back, for God's sake, to your own country, you know, go to hell. Otherwise, expect to hear from the virgin, who will soon visit you to your great detriment. King of England, if you don't do this, I am the commander-in-chief, and whatever I... Where, wherever I find your people in France, in America, I'll force them to leave willy-nilly. And if they won't obey, I'll have them all killed. I am sent here by God. to boot you out of France. King Charles, the true heir, shall have her, for God, the King of Heaven, wills it. Pretty bold, right? And, let's see. When she was 13, St. Michael the Archangel informed her that she had been chosen by the King of Heaven to save the Kingdom of France. He also told her that she must wear masculine clothing because you shall bear arms and become the head of the army. All things shall be guided by your counsel. St. Michael was joined by hundreds of angels, but principally St. Catherine and the primitive St. Margaret, who transmitted the orders from heaven. So today we have St. Teresa of the Holy Face and others working through Marianne Van Hoof and Veronica Lucan and Sister Lucia. And they asked Joan of Arc why she didn't speak English. And she said, why should they? You know, when the, the saints were talking to her, right? She heard voices. She said, why should they, when they were on the French side? As to whether or not St. Michael was naked, she replied, do you suppose our Lord didn't have the wherewithal to clothe him? Very simple. And a couple of items here. She wrote a letter to who was the true king. You know, Jesus Christ is the true king of this world. We're not going to have no antichrist, and we're not going to have no kings that are evil. The only one that's going to rule is Jesus Christ, the eternal high priest, and our true, true and living God, and his pontiff, whoever he chooses. And that would be the pope, a legitimate pope. We're not going to take a false one. By your fruits you'll know him. And the false one's going to have a coat of arms, like a half moon, a crescent moon on it. So that's how you'll know if they try to put a false pope in, if they kill John Paul II and put a fake one in. So watch for that. And Jesus Christ is the true king. So here, God's trying to put the, the real king, the dauphin, he was called. Okay, here it is. Gentle, dauphin. My name is Jehan la Pastel. I don't know French. My name is Joan the Virgin, translated. Listen to the language. The King of Heaven sends me to you with the message that you shall be anointed and crowned in the city of Reims, and that you shall be the lieutenant of the King of Heaven, who is the King of France. And there you have 
that Jesus Christ is the true ruler of this world. He's the king of France. He's the king of England. He's the king of every nation. He's the king of America, king of my heart, and he's the king of kings, and he has to rule. And so there you have it. A couple other items. She had a standard, which is, means a banner, and God told her to make a banner. I'll just read it. Um, Jesus Maria was enthroned the figure on the banner was enthroned the figure of Christ the King holding the world in his hand and flanked by two angels and at her trial she said I loved my sword but I loved my standard 40 times more the whole thing was ordered by our Lord by the voices of Saint Catherine and Saint Margaret who told me take up the standard for the King of Heaven take it boldly and God will help you. That's my advice to each one of you people. Take up the standard, the cross, the rosary, the scapular, your Bible, and go forward as a soldier of Christ and get everything else you need um, to defeat the enemies of, of evil. And, uh, you know, God's not a wimp. They're trying to show you on TV, uh, be a pacifist as a Christian. Uh, when Jesus was arrested, Peter said, here's two swords, Lord, read it. And he said, that is enough. God is not a wimp. You can't, if you don't stop the evil people, they're going to kill you and rule the world, and all the future people coming up will become evil under tyranny. You have to stop the evil people and cut them down, mow them down. That's what God gave you something. You have to defend it. You have to defend your family, your faith, your faith, your family, and your, your faith, your country, and your family. Your faith, your country, and your family. And save your soul. God expects you to do that as a soldier of Christ. We're the church militant. Take up arms. Okay, here we go. She says, you know, my true and sovereign Lord, you know, I beseech you with my hands joined on the part of the King of Heaven, my true and sovereign Lord, that you cease warring with the Holy Kingdom of France. All who war against this said Holy Kingdom of France are at war with the King of Jesus, King of Heaven, and the whole world. You war against the Catholic Church, you're warring against God. Masons, take note. Come out of it. Here's a quote. She, she assured the king, peace cannot be had but at the point of a lance. Now Jesus said, he who lives by the sword will perish by the sword, because that's true. If you're going to go out with a sword and cause trouble and try to get things done by violence, then God's going to give you that curse. You're going to die by that. God never wanted offensive violence. But... When evil begins to take over the world, you have to take up the sword and you have to combat that evil. Fight fire with fire. And that's what God wants you to do. He says, peace cannot be had but at the point of a lance. If they're going to come in and mow you down, what have you done to, to stop them? You have to defend your country. And if you die in the process, you're a martyr and you go straight to heaven. Right? You know, if someone's going to come... If I had a, a daughter and someone's going to come rape my daughter and I was in the room and they're holding me back, I have two choices. I can let them rape her or I can fight with my fingernails and every ounce of strength I have to prevent that from happening. And so the choice that you have to make, you have two choices. Do something or do nothing about this problem. And do nothing is a sin of omission and it's a cowardly thing and God's going to get rid of you. You have to rise up. You know, I didn't ask for war. I didn't invent it. But now that they, the enemies of God, have picked this fight and have, have plans to kill you, you have to rise up and defend yourself. Do some push-ups. Get prepared so that you can stop them from imposing a satanic rule upon God's people. You owe it to God, and you owe it to the children and the future generations. All the veterans have given their lives all through a couple centuries here in America, at least. And now it's your turn to fight for heaven. The Eternal Father created you to defeat his enemy, Lucifer. 
and the forces of 666 have set up camp in our country and they now control the country. Rockefeller owns the country way back to 1920. He owns all the medias, you know, and it's a stranglehold. He should forgive the debt and knock it off and call it even and God wouldn't wipe us out. But they serve the devil. They answer to the devil. They don't have a choice. And if the devil gets his hand on that button, on that diabolical button, that technological button, nuclear weapons, things are going to start being annihilated in seconds. That's what Our Lady of Fatima said. And the only way to stop it now, it's impossible humanly. All things are possible with God. The only way to stop it now is if you will cancel Disneyland, knock off whatever you're involved in, all your little crafts and things and distractions of the world, and begin a life of prayer and penance every moment and a constant vigil of prayer. And I mean every second. Every second you're alive, you can send up one prayer to heaven. Each Hail Mary, each Glory Be, each Our Father, each kind thing you do, all your sacrifices and fasting adds up in the bank and it'll make a difference in America. You can't stop what's coming, but at this point we can try to damage control, try to diminish the amount of souls that...
My harmonica. Now 